Hi, my name is Graydon Blair from Utah Biodiesel Supply and today we're going to show you how to do a titration which is measuring the acidity in the oil. We had a customer bring by some vegetable oil and we don't know what its acid level is and we need to be able to make biodiesel out of this oil and to do that we need to do a titration. I'm going to show you some of the things that we get in a kit from Utah Biodiesel Supply. Today we're going to show you our mini basic biodiesel titration kit which we'll be using today to do the titration. This comes with three jars to put your samples in, six vials to do the titration in itself, three syringes to test the oil, alcohol, and titration solution with, a mini scale to weigh things out, and a full set of instructions. What you'll need to purchase in addition to this kit is some isopropyl alcohol, some distilled water, and a container that can hold one liter of water. You'll also need for a pH testing solution either turmeric powder that you can pick up at a grocery store or phenolphthalein that you can purchase online through Utah Biodiesel Supply or other vendors. You can also use phenol red. We're going to prepare the titration kit for use. The first thing that I like to do is take the three jars that come with the kit and label them one for oil, one for alcohol, and one for the titration solution. I also will unpack the syringes and put them in each of these so I know which ones they are. So this is titration. I'm just going to put a T. This one is for alcohol. Do an A. And one is for my oil sample. The reason we use these jars instead of sampling directly from the items is we don't want to contaminate the source material. The next step we're going to do is prepare our titration solution. To do that, we need to measure out a liter of water into here, and then we're going to put this water into here, and then we're going to measure out the catalyst. So to do that, I have a very accurate measuring cup. You can purchase these on Utah Biodiesel Supply, or you can go into most grocery stores and find anything that just has a liter marking on the side. But it's important that you make it, that you fill it right to the liter mark. So I'm just gonna fill this up. This is distilled water and it's important that you use distilled. If you use other water, the water can be acidic or basic. This distilled water is perfectly neutral and should be because what we're trying to measure in the oil has to do with measuring pH. There's our liter of water. We offer these carboys on our website as well, but you can get anything that just has, that'll hold a liter of water is the important thing. So I've got a liter of water there. My next step is to measure out a gram of potassium hydroxide. To do that, we've unpacked the scale that came with the kit. We've turned it on. We're going to tear the scale, which means we put the weighing tray on there and we set it to zero using the tear function. Also you'll notice that I have some rubber gloves on. We're playing with a caustic base so it's important that we try and be safe. So with that done we're now going to weigh out our gram of catalyst. You want to try and get this as close as you can to a gram. And this scale is accurate down to 0.05 of a gram. a little bit too much, so we're going to back that off. Where we're at. Okay, we're almost there. Nine, five, one, right on the money. Okay, and now we're going to put it into our titration solution. We take the tray with our catalyst and very carefully get all of that catalyst right into the top of your bottle. This is the most important thing we'll do because everything that we make our biodiesel off of chemical wise is based off of this. So we'll cap this up, seal it, we're going to shake it and let that dissolve and we'll do our titration. So that's how simple it is to make your titration solution. 
Our next step is to prepare everything to get ready to do the titration. To do that, I'm going to take a sample of our oil and put it in the oil cup. Then I'm going to put some isopropyl alcohol in the alcohol cup and then put a little bit of titration solution in here. Again, I'm putting them in these cups first so that I don't contaminate my source. That's important. So you really don't need a whole lot in here. We're going to use being using about 10 to 20 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol, which isn't a whole lot. So isopropyl alcohol can be purchased at a local hardware store. It can be also purchased in a grocery store or uh, places like Walmart. I just ran over to Walmart and got 91%. If you really want to get some um, pure stuff, we do sell 99% pure alcohol on our website, but this will do for a titration. Our titration solution is now fully dissolved. The potassium hydroxide is in here. Uh, so I'm going to put a little bit of that. into our titration cup and then I'm going to put a little bit of oil we're going to be testing into there nice goopy oil we're going to do the titration by putting 10 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol into our vial and I've just pre-measured these out we're going to put our one milliliter of oil into here and then I'm going to cap this and just shake it a little bit to make sure we fully dissolve that oil sample. And so you notice it's going to look kind of yellowish. That's okay. That's, that's what it kind of needs to look like. The next step is I'm going to put a couple drops of phenolphthalein in there. Now again, you can use um, turmeric powder. You can also use phenol red. But I've got phenolphthalein here today and it doesn't really need to be much at all. What this is doing is it's just going to change color when we hit a certain pH. Okay, so we, our sample is now ready to titrate. Let's do the actual titration. Our goal is for this color in here to turn pink as I put the titration solution in. We'll know when to stop when this stays pink for 30 seconds or more. So here we go. Notice how quick that turned pink. We swirl it around, the pink goes away, we keep putting some more in. This was brought to me by a customer that had done turkey frying in this oil. So my guess is that this oil is going to be pretty darn good oil. Probably hasn't been used much and, is, and it's turning pink pretty quick. We're almost to that pinkish color that we want all the way through. See that it's almost maintaining pink. I want it just a hat, tad more. Make sure it's good and pink. And I think that it's there. So how we figure out what it took is we look at our syringe. I started with 10 milliliters of titration solution in here. I'm down to nine. That means that it only took one milliliter of titration solution to make this go pink. That's pretty good oil. Anything from about zero to three is incredible oil. Three to five is average oil. Above five is oil that's been beat up pretty darn hard. Now, when we titrate, it's important to do three titrations. So I've done my first one, set that aside, and we'll do number two and number three. There, it's starting to change a little bit. There we go. Look at that. That's it. This time, it took a half. So if you look at my syringe here, I started at 10, and now I'm only to nine and a half. There, she's going pink. I'm gonna shake that around. And I would say that we're done. We started at 10. We are at 9.75. So this is really, really, really good oil. We've done our titration. Our first one was one. Second one was 0.5. And our third one was 0.25. And we're gonna divide those by three. That means our titration was about 0.58 or 0.59. So I'm going to actually round this up and it was 0.6. So it took 0.6 
milliliters of titration solution to turn this pink. Next we're going to talk about how we translate that into making biodiesel. Now it's time to figure out how much catalyst we're going to use when we make biodiesel. We're going to suggest that we're going to make a 50 gallon batch. So our batch size is going to be equal to 50 gallons. We know that this oil titrated at 0 0.6 milliliters and it's time to figure things out. We know that if we're using brand new oil, we it will take um, 7.0 grams of potassium hydroxide per liter of oil to make it. So I'm going to call this my base. The oil was brand new, how much I would use. I'm going to use 7.0, okay? To that base, I add 0 0.6 because that's how much additional catalyst per liter of oil it takes to make biodiesel. I get 7.6. So for every liter of oil that I want to make biodiesel with, I need to add 7.6 grams of potassium hydroxide. Now, how do you figure that into a gallon? Well, there are 3.785 liters to a gallon. Okay, so if we have a 50 gallon batch, times that by 3.785, bring the calculator in, we've got 189.25 liters. You can round up with this, so I'm going to call it 190 liters. It times that by 7.6, and I get 1,444 grams. Okay, now if my potassium hydroxide was absolutely pure, this is what I would use. However, we're using potassium hydroxide that's about 90% pure, so we need to alter this a little bit. Let's come back to our base. How we do that is we take our base of 7, assuming pure, and we divide it by 0 0.90. 7 divided by 0 0.90 is 7.7, .7, or I'm going to round up to 7.8. So 7.8 plus my 0 0.6 8.4 times that by my 190 I get 1596 grams so to make biodiesel out of the potassium hydroxide that I have out of the oil that I had today I would add 1,596 grams of potassium hydroxide into my 50-gallon batch. And that's how easy it is to do a titration.